So, you have a language for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called Swedish. Oh, very cool. S-W-E-E-D-I-S-H? Actually, there's just one E. Well, that would be Swedish. Oh, it's definitely pronounced Swedish. Aren't people gonna misspell that? All the time, sir. So anyway, what's this Swedish like? Well, you know English? Sure, English. I've heard of it. It's basically gonna be like that. So it's just English then? Yeah, it has mostly the same word order, a bunch of cognates, the same alphabet. Same alphabet, huh? You mean like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Oh, uh, uh. oh, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Z. Actually, it's pronounced Z, but I'm talking about the Swedish alphabet. It ends in O uh, E uh. O. Oh, so it has extra letters. But being at the end of the alphabet, they're probably not used very often, right? <laughs> All the time. Huh. Yeah, see, they're all vowels and they're some of the most common letters in the whole language. Plus, they just look like other letters, but with things on top of them. Oh, you mean like an umlaut? They're not umlaut, sir. This is not German. That's offensive. Take that back. They're different letters. So how did this happen? Where did these extra letters come from? Well, you see, this one here... It kind of looks like A and O had a child. Yeah, nah. A, A and O have never met. They've definitely met and definitely had a really good time. Anyway, the point is the alphabet's mostly the same as the English one. But with three extra letters, one of which is an illegitimate child. Okay, you need to stop making suggestions about or. Or. Yeah, or. That's its name. The name of the letter that you're suggesting didn't come from two letters getting to know each other is or. Hey, shut up. These letters are super important, but they come at the end of the alphabet. Got it? Well, okay then. But I'm guessing that having cognates with English plus a bunch of the same letters and word order will make it easy to understand. Kind of like a dialect, like Canadian or Australian, right? Those are two random dialects to bring up, but to answer your question, no, not really. Oh, what do you mean? What makes Swedish hard to understand? The accent. So the accent's the hardest thing about it, huh? Pretty much. It's gonna sound so weird to English speakers that one of the most famous puppets in the world is gonna be the Swedish chef and his whole character is that he talks weird. That sounds funny. He's gonna talk in a Swedish accent? No. Huh. So tell me about some other languages that are similar. Can anyone understand these people? Absolutely. To the West there's Norway and Norwegian is so similar that people are going to argue about whether it even counts as a different language. A very controversial similarity. Yeah, and then to the South there's Danish, which stems from the same language and has a lot of the same words. Nice, I bet that's going to be easy to understand. Actually, it'll be super difficult and very inconvenient. Oh, really? Yeah, see, for some reason Danish people are just never going to use their tongues or their teeth to make sounds. So how do they talk? You'll take Oh, that sounds awful. Please stop that now. Certainly, sir. Okay, so that's to the west and the south. What about to the east? To the what? You know, like to the east of Sweden, what countries there, what language do they speak? No country, just water. Yeah, yeah, but like across the water, there must be something there. Well, there's, you know, actually nothing at all. I could have sworn there was something. So tell me a little bit more about Swedish as a language. Like, what are its features? Well, it has two genders. That is a sensible number of genders. Yeah, but they're not actually going to be genders. It's just going to be one kind of word and another kind of word. Sure, but the words for, say, brother and sister, they're going to be different genders, right? Nope. Girl and boy? Hmm, nah. Man and woman? No. Oh, I get it. So it's like humans are all part of the same category, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neat. Not children, though. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, children aren't human. Anyway, what's really cool is the plurals. Well, you said it's a lot like English, so I guess you just put an S on the end. Well, you put A-R. That sounds simple enough. Or O-R. That is how you spell the word or. No, I mean to make a plural. Sometimes it's O-R. Ah, uh, could be worse, I guess. And sometimes it's E-R. Mm. Sometimes it's O-N. It's getting weird. Sometimes two letters in the ordinary words switch places before you add more letters. Please stop with the plural forms now. Definitely. You've got more, don't you? Yes, so way more. See, the best one is the one that's literally identical to the singular. You mean like English has on some less common words like sheep? It's exactly like that. Only it's for a quarter of all existing nouns. So you're telling me that a quarter of all the nouns in the language have no plural at all, but the remaining plurals are divided into 47 categories? Mm-hmm. Plus irregulars. Oh, irregular plural forms are tight. If that's your thing... So anyway, what are some things that people are going to like about this language? Does it at least have some cool words? Absolutely. The one they're most proud of is fika. And what's its deal? Well, you know when you take a break from work to have some coffee and some morning tea and maybe hang out with a friend? Sure, I... I... I have friends. Well, it's similar to that except they call it fika and that makes it Swedish. That sounds a lot like a coffee break. Uh, no, no, not... no. It's different. 
It's Fika. Wait, they've just named the normal coffee break and now they're claiming that as being Swedish? It kind of feels like using someone else's idea and claiming it as your own. Well, I don't recommend you say that to them. Why? What'll happen? They'll lecture you for 45 minutes. Wow, wow, wow. Well. So what are these people called, anyway? Swedes. Are they named after a vegetable? Technically, the vegetable's named after them. That sounds ridiculous. You can't have a nationality and a vegetable called the same thing. You do realize there's a whole country called Turkey, right? Well, I'm getting hungry. No, it's further east than that. Anyway, what do you think? Well, look, to be perfectly honest with you, it sounds like it's different enough to English that it'll be hard to learn and similar enough that no one will care if you do, so I can't really see anyone choosing to learn it. You know, unless they're a complete nutjob.